I like to celebrate things by doing things outside of my box, which is how I came to Madison Story Slam. I said, and met Melissa, she's nodding to us. I remember meeting your crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I get to celebrate another one of my holidays tonight that I like to call St. Patrick's Eve. So I'm going to tell you how this night became very special to me. Um, it is March 17th tomorrow. That's St. Patrick's Day. What do Wisconsinites do on St. Patrick's Day? Okay, established, okay. Okay, so <laughs> what would a bar on Atwood look like on St. Patrick's Day in Madison, Wisconsin? <laughs> right, with a really good band going and everything, it's gonna be packed. I got to be the lucky duck that was working that shift with only one other person last year who was the owner of this establishment. A lot of things had gone on in my life to lead me, I don't say this, uh, okay, here we go. I always have to like preface things I say so I don't offend anybody. I'm gray collar all the way, but I was wondering why I was bartending on St. Patrick's Day when earlier, that a year before, I was working in a law firm, you know? And I'm like, okay, this is my reality now. My boss is drunk. All right, this is what I'm doing tonight. So there I was on St. Patrick's Day, and after my boss, who'd been going through some issues of his own, because some of his family members had made national news recently at grocery stores. He had been pretty much at his limit, and I was the easiest person to vent to. So after a few of the patrons stopped paying attention to the really good band that was playing, they came over to me and they said, this, this, and this just occurred. I said, I know, I know, I saw that. I saw that. And they said, we're going to call the Madison Police Department if you do not do something about that. I went, there's 200 of you. There's one of me. You can do whatever you feel necessary because he just did that to you. So the Madison Police were called and they took testimony from these people. They also took testimony from a few other patrons who volunteered. And they came up to me and they said, we were told that he just did this, this, and this to you. Is that true? I said, absolutely. Yes, it is. Is what they said true? Yes, I witnessed that one and that one. Yes, it's all true. And they went and approached this man and he said, you can't touch me. I'll call my older woman and she'll have your badges. And they began to try and talk him down. And he said, you can't touch me. My ex-girlfriend's sitting right over there and she's a Madison police officer. And she was there. But I know where she was sitting, there was no way she could see through 75 people to where he was behaving this way. And the police, they got him outside and they took testimony from him, which I would love to give you the case number, but you know, you can always look this up. <laughs> it's all there. I made sure I had to go back five times and almost threatened to sue the city to make sure my testimony is finally included. Because there's this little thing in the Madison Police Department called Standards of Operating Procedure and they are required to take testimony from the employees. They're required to take testimony from victims. They refuse to take my statement. And I'm just realizing right now, the man who is sitting there that night with me is here tonight. So that's a cool party thing. Yay, this is a happy, ha ha it's not Halloween, it's St. Patrick's Eve, I gotta get these straight. Long story short, the police took this man outside. They came back in and they said, there's some problems here. We're gonna take this guy outside. I said, you need to take him to detox. You need to take him out of the public. You were just told this happened. You see what's happened to me because at this time I had cuts on my legs from him throwing glasses and some other people had been injured. They handed me his driver's license and they said, don't let him back behind the bar. Don't let him drive. I said, are you kidding me right now? You are the police. You were called here by those people. And they walked out. And I have a message which I screenshot because I like to look at every now and then to remember that this all really happened this way. But I have a screenshot that says, what the 
F is going on with this person? I'm over here at Mickey's and he's outside yelling with the police? And I went, oh, happy St. Patrick's Day. I closed the bar by myself, made over $946 in tips, which I thought was great until I realized later that he just wasn't ringing anything in. He was just taking money and throwing it in the pot. And my dumbass split tips with him because I felt bad for the position he was in. Okay. He came back that night while I was closing by myself. I counted over 60 bottles of liquor. I still look at these pictures. Why wouldn't he come back to his own place? The, the police didn't do anything to him. Why wouldn't he come back to his own place? So by 4 a.m., I had bruises. I had cuts on me. His girlfriend had locked herself in the liquor cage to keep away from him. Madison police came back the following Monday and they said, hey, we need to talk to the other owner of this place who owns this other bar over on Cottage Grove Road. And we're going to press charges against this man because these people have made these statements. But oddly, when I was standing in common council, because I've testified to these things and other things three times, and my city attorney said, well, we talked to him in an emergency meeting behind closed doors, and due to extenuating circumstances, we are not charging anyone. Which meant I had no case and when he let me go because he told me I could not cooperate with the police investigation, all of a sudden I had no voice, I had no job, I had nothing. I had no attorney in this city that would touch this with a 10-foot pole. But I had, I have kids, by the way. Thank you guys for your patience with them. My daughter begged to come hear me tell a story. Now she's not even listening. I get you. Ah, yeah. They're actually the reason that I do what I do, why I'm here and why I went out on my 40th birthday, why I now celebrate St. Patrick's Eve. It's why I'm going to be singing tomorrow night because I found a community like Adam and Jen and my buddy Nate that it's not storytelling, so he does a great open mic. And these people have let me have a voice. And they've given me hope and they've given me a community that listens and they've given me courage because I just got a call from the FBI and they're wondering what the hell's going on in Madison. So I also have a voice now. Thank you. <laughs>